got an orange tinge. Very tinge. <sighs> we good? Ah. Oh, we're on? Oh, we on? I didn't know. It's my first Whoa. day. It's only episode 229. It's 230, buddy. 230? Yeah. I thought it was 229. You slept walk through 229. You know, they all can't be great. Before we get into the podcast with some good x miss Did you know X means Christ in Greece and in Greek? That's no. why you go x miss That's not I used, real. I, look it up. Google that shit. I used to have fights with pe- Christian people that would go, I don't I don't call it Xmas because that's blasphemous. And then I Googled it when Google was first around when it was it had little like three pubes when Google mm-hmm. Google like nineteen ninety eight. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, X, as you found the answer you're X looking means for Christ. Was enough research. Right. Right. Uh, Go Google the, enough the right, until I get it right. The correct yes. right wing websites that you need. Extreme right. We are already off the track. Sweat Equity Podcast and streaming show Pragmatic Entrepreneurial Advice with Dick Jokes. Get that dick tie around your neck. Hosted by me, Law Smith. Sitting to my right, stage left, is Eric Reginger. Uh, hitting the soundboard as well and producing while co hosting it. Multi talented. We'll do it live. If you were uh, a resume builder, you'd call him a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> uh, hashtag girthy RI, hashtag 69B2B, and hashtag sweat equity. When you share this podcast out to the friends that need some pragmatic business advice and maybe just sage like wisdom from two 35 year old white males. Right. Mm-hmm. They need more of that. Uh, rate, review, give us that five star. We're on everything podcasts or on that Apple Podcast app. Your mom's Walkman, Spotify, Zoom. We're even on Zoom. Um, go on YouTube, Facebook, and Vimeo. We're all on there. And then we got to figure out LinkedIn Live. Someone at LinkedIn. Abraham LinkedIn. Hit Abraham us up. LinkedIn. Let's let's get some Emancipation Proclamation yes. on our news feed. We can't go LinkedIn Live. I want to do it. I think we're the perfect show for it. Yeah. We'll taper it back a little bit for LinkedIn, or we'll get a we'll get a cough button, we'll a mute pretend button. like we will. I'll do the sponsors really quick. This episode is brought to you by Grasshopper Business Phone Line. Don't have a Google Voice if you're trying to do your own side hustle. Try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. That gets you fifty dollars off your business phone line. Gets us a little, a little, mm-hmm, a little. How's your father for this show? You know couple what I'm saying? Couple shackles. A couple shackles. Uh, while you're at it, you might as well get some accounting software that can also invoice Ooh. those clients, right? Yeah. Uh, don't You don't want to send it through PayPal as an invoice. It's an option, but uh, it's not favorable. FreshBooks is the Which way to jobber. go. It's less, it's less of a transaction cost than QuickBooks and Xero, and you get that direct deposit the next day. I can't emphasize that enough. Give me money. <laughs> go FreshBooks.com forward slash sweat. That gets you a hookup. I think it gets you about a hundred bucks off of the software if you use it for the year. That's hundred yeah. bucks off. It's pretty and you're good. Gonna, we're getting into tax season. I see the Liberty Tax Weirdos already out in the street. Let's uh, and then we got Warby Parker, WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. Get your glasses prescription or your sunglasses. Get them done online. They'll send you five free pairs. Try on. Get the ladies in your life to make fun of you. Get the ladies in the office to pick out the right ones like I did. Um, and I got my prescription ones done. Warby Parker, Warby Parker trial.com forward slash sweat. And these links will be in the episode description as well as try oh, yeah. The newest workout gear, the best workout gear, be that influencer amongst your friends. Uh, makes it feel stupid for not having Roan gear. Th- this is like the high Losers. end. Yeah, it's the high end Under Armour. It's the next it's, big thing. It's all about the stitching, the way they stitch it differently. It's high quality workout gear. We got to get some to represent on this show because otherwise I'm just going to wear white trash tank tops like I'm doing right now with a big old zit. You see this zit right here? We all see it. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. Right there. You see it? Hold on. Give me a minute. Let's get it close up there. Get that zit right in there. there. Mm. Gross. Yes. I tried to pick it on the way over here. Made it work. I had a scab, and then it got, like, Mount Vesuvius on me. Are we ready to get this thing going? Yeah. What about my... Hotty Daddy!
<laughs> do it live. I can, gonna... I'll write it and we'll do it live. <laughs> It's gonna be hard to have that not be funny. I know. I we were listening to it for fun before yeah. the show started, just R- because that uh, manager Lou Brown. Yeah, is it's that... either a leg thing, <laughs> or a spiritual thing, or a psychological thing. It, it's great. It could be Every the time. rum and coke. I don't know. That doesn't matter. You know, as long as we're having fun. Well, we're dressed down today. What? <laughs> uh, you know, we're really we're usually in suits. Right. Business casuals, you know, the blazer. Well, it's fantasy football championship weekend, everybody. You gotta get in the uh gotta get in the comfortable mood. Well, I'd Sit like to in, say that in. when other podcasts are taking a break, the big dogs out there, we're still hammering through. We're still we're... inconveniencing our families. <laughs> you know, we don't give Your a shit. Your kids are waiting on they're they're, they're outside. waiting on They've us been banging to go on do the front a, door this whole time. A Christmas scavenger hunt with the rest of the family. And we're like, no, we gotta talk about uh, Fomunda cheese and uh, digital marketing. What? Yeah, yeah. Twenty-seven yeah. minutes, kids. Yeah. To your scavenger hunt. They're gonna, you're gonna like walk up. They're gonna be like, "Well, we already did it. Oh, We've been done for twenty that minutes." That memory is gone. Who cares about dad? Yeah, I mm-hmm. don't care. Uh, tell me about. I like your attitude about um, having your drink. You, oh. You, you teased it for the incremental, uh, the podcast, the solo podcast that you don't do. Um, but <laughs> I, but I like, uh, this theoretical podcast I have. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I have one called work, uh, smarter, not harder that I've yet to do. Cause I, I can't get around. The, it's like, oh, to me, that first one is like listening, listening to the podcast or up comedy, like listen to yourself back. Like, yeah, no thanks. You have to get over that hump and then, then it's fine. Then you're yeah. a gravy. But that first couple of times is to horrible. Yeah. It's like watching yourself fuck, you know, <laughs> the first couple of times. On my hidden cameras. Well, I mean, masturbate. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> well, I want well, to get better. I want right? to have good form. Right. I don't want to like have tennis elbow right. or get Tommy John surgery one day. Perfect practice makes perfect. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, mm. I was saying, you know, we're like 36 years old now. You're 36. We need to, as a, as a society, figure out what drink you can drink and not get hung over and, and handle yourself because I've been drinking Captain Morgan for, a, you know, 15 years now, oddly enough. <laughs> not like I'm it's proud a bu- of it. It's but bullshit that it, it has become like what high schoolers, I don't know if it's high schooler kind of drink everywhere around the country. I didn't know if that was more of a rum, Florida you mean the, thing. just the rum and, and Cokes? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of bullshit. Yeah. I mean, I just don't care for one thing. It's like, you know, what are you gonna do? Make fun of me? Go for it. Okay? Right. Well, you've already been. Yeah, you're. It's just your it, soul's already been hurt I've already, so much. I know. Like, what are you gonna? You, I don't even have feelings to hurt. Mm-hmm. It's just. But I figured out. Captain tastes good to me. Captain makes me not hung over. I know when to dial it back. You know, it's kind of hard for me to get out of control when I'm drinking Captain. It's kind of it hits a uh, plateau, and I'm I'm kind of good, and. That's different for everybody, but figure it out, guys. Well, and it's important. I, I was even I was even thinking I wasn't even thinking that way. That's a better way to think about it. <laughs> I was thinking like just legit, like um, you know, you're walking into a party with your uh, wife, and she just knows what to get you. Yes, that's also <laughs> like, a plus to me. That's like way better than anything because you're not gonna really beat a hangover. Yeah. If you do, if you party right, you know, right, right, you well, know, bro, you're yeah. doing whippets in the parking no, lot. No, I we went to a, a Christmas party recently, and I just straight up bring my own little bar, where it's like a hundred people at a party. I have my little Publix bag. I set it outside right on the patio. <laughs> Hold on, let's back this I up. I got my captain. I You've got my never Coke talked Zero. about this. <laughs> I got ice sitting out there. I don't need to go inside for ice. Just like, ooh, I don't offer anybody. Wait, <laughs> you bring in your own? Yes. And I'm not even thinking. It's a party, of, not like. I mean, these are like old. You old bring friends. in a grocery bag, but not, I was thinking a plastic grocery no, no. bag, like, like the uh, green ones that. Uh, I use know, it as a cooler too, because <laughs> it's, it's plastic. A, it's a bag it's like, slash cooler. I'm not gonna buy a cardboard cooler. Briefcase. It's also a briefcase on Monday. <laughs> but <laughs> wait. But I mean, it, it plays into the like. I, I'm good. I don't need to worry about. Oh, do they have my drink? Do they have what I want to? I'm a guy. I yeah. get two things. I bring two things and some ice. I'm good. Yeah, and then uh, last night I I was I went I took a 
I took it out of your keto kind of, uh, you know, playbook. And I'm like, okay, I was about to get some Tito's. And then I was like, uh, I don't really, you can't. Tito Keto's. Tito Keto? Um, there, oh, what's funny is, by the way, this is funny in a marketing sense. You know, as soon as a diet becomes quasi popular, you ever seen the chart of, um, of marketing groups before? You have early adopters. You have, uh, you have like, um, uh, what's it called? Most people are in the laggard area, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Think of the iPhone, right? right? Like when it came out in 06, maybe you and I were some of the first, like, we're not the first 5%. We're not waiting in line at Best we're, Buy. But we're the early adopters, right? We might get the second phone. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that, that middle glut of the bell curve is, is just laggard. That's how they kind of break up marketing groups. Right, right. Um, the keto, the diet stuff's always funny because I'm walking around a fucking liquor store, <laughs> which is like, just give up. Like, don't. <laughs> what are you doing? Where's your keto section? Like, you can uh, mitigate risk, fat risk, I guess, by doing the rubbing diet coke, yeah. rubbing coke zero. Um, it's just as bad for you though. Any any alcohol is going to be bad for you. You just you know you're taking a little bit of an L. Um, sure. sure. At, when you walk through the threshold of. But the corporate liquor store. There is a way state. to mitigate it, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. And then what I was thinking was like Slim Fast has it, like the shakes that say keto. And I'm like, I looked at it, I was like, man, Eric was gonna rip through that, like, like go through the back of that packaging and just give me go, those nutrition this facts shit now. Isn't give keto me at all. Like, yeah, you could just put keto in anything. Yeah, I, yeah. There's been or I've paleo had, or whatever you want. I've had a lot of conversations with people. It's like, yeah, I'm on paleo. I only eat four apples a day. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> never mind. Tell My me. new thing is, Let A, never, I'm never giving, I'm trying to never give dieting advice or workout advice again unless someone asks. Yes. That's tough. Right. Because someone will half ask you and then you get into it because you're like, you have to be kind of obsessive about it to really make a change in your yes, life. Yes, exactly. And it should be more interesting. But every time I, I get out of that conversation, I feel like a bigger douche than when I came into it. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, I, the way I look at both now or just anything physical is there's definitely not one – just one rule everybody can follow, right? That's why this, that's why this will always be – Exactly. Democrats and Republicans fighting, right? Like we need one to balance out the other kind of thing. I the, mean – Our American system kind of works well, I think, because it – I mean we, we could do a lot more <laughs> probably – if Probably. we didn't bitch as much, but at least we have this way of bitching so much that it keeps the other in check mm-hmm. in one direction. Okay. I think I get it. Well, and, and, what? Th- and <laughs> in this way, maybe maybe I had a sip of a rum and coke and I'm drunk. But <laughs> yeah. in this way, I look at like diet exercise stuff like in a similar w- way of there's so much garbage out there advice-wise that you're just going to have to figure it out on your own. Well, way. exactly. Yeah, you're, that, you're, you're your own science experiment is how I look at it. Yeah. I mean, there's the side where it's like there's a lot of people who just want to just tell me what I need to do exactly, tell me exactly what I need to eat, work it out for me perfectly, and I can do that sort of thing. But really, it's like, man, there's – I don't say that, like, everybody should be keto. I like it. I feel better doing it that way, but – there's people, uh, you know, they feel really shitty and like they don't want to get past that like initial like downtime because you you do kind of have like a, when you get into ketosis at first they have a keto flu, it does happen. You do feel like you're dying, just not. Your body is reacting to not having this fuel that it's used to having, so right. it, it goes into immune system mode. But that's you know, people are gonna feel differently. There's no. There's no one way to do it, and if you're not taking time to figure it out for yourself, like, dude, that's just you gotta gotta figure that out, and then you can live your life. Well, here here's how I think about it. It's all a hypothesis, right? Because we're gonna get into January, and everyone's like, "All right, oh, we're, this is Lots 2020." Faces at the gym. My vision is 2020. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And everybody, I think, like, what is it, 90% of people do not uh, carry their New Year's resolutions by February or something crazy oh, like I that? I don't know, but that it, sounds right. I, I, I'm pretty sure we brought it up on this show last year because it's like, that's such an astounding but real, like, I believe it. 
Yeah. Stat. That's why all gyms, if you look at how gym memberships work, like that business model, you can't have all the members go there. Oh no. <laughs> right. Like if they, yeah, exactly. It's all, like, it's a, vo- oh, it's a volume thing, right? Fire so department's here. Think Walmart over Tiffany's mm-hmm. kind of thing. If you're looking at just basic kind of uh, Porter's five factors or whatever, you know, you got differentiation or you got, you know, the same, but volume. Um, and like, uh, the thing with I love that the gym model is basically like you guys are going to burn out by March, right? And we have that's the only way that model works. And we encourage you to do so because if you didn't, we'd be fucked. Right? No, no. Like it literally can't have capacity of all the members there at, at even like uh, broken up times if they were there at right. the rush hour times, yeah. the morning and the afternoon time. I'm sure there's an algorithm that says. If your capacity is this, it can, you can only have this so many members, you know. If you're, if they gave a shit to do it, I don't think they're doing Moneyball kind of. I think they just know human behavior. Yeah, I, it'd be interesting actually. because it's probably in my literature over there. I should be studying. Yeah, well, <laughs> but it, the studying's going to be good for you. I think that's it. It sounds like a slog because you don't want to do it right now, but it's always good uh, per advice of. Power business attorney uh, Stephen Fantetti. It, he's like, he really had to push this into my head the last couple of years. He's like, have multiple revenue streams. Have you know, have multiple things going on, but don't max yourself out. Right. He's like, you're doing a lot of shit for free that to, that you can't put a hundred percent into, and that's where you're getting fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's at the very least, it's a great exercise for my brain. You know, it's a I have it studied really for something in a long time where yeah. it's like the most uh, you have to sit down and be quiet that's yeah that sucks oh well i mean just a new facet to it all it's like i can't study at my house really like, yeah if i try and study like i have to like lock myself in a room and say you're not doing laundry it's not even like i'm like dicking around it's like oh well, that needs to be clean this needs to be done like i do the same so much thing shit. like I, I have I'm it's not, weird. Uh, we're working on getting uh, an office for the new gig I've got, and you know they're br- they're penetrating into <sighs> the Florida market, so it's kind of like, <laughs> so it's kind of like you know I want to be a team player. I'm like don't you know what, like I, my computer's fine. You don't have to buy that. Like you know what, I don't need a corporate one. That's a waste of money to me. Right. Uh, like I can work from home for a while, but now it's getting to the point where it's like. I was just talking about this before I came over here. It's like, there's always something to do when you have little kids. Yep. And, you know, I'll spend a lot. Like, I think we can both kind of multitask. Not not meaning, here's another thing. Like, same with the diet stuff, advice. When you hear multitasking, people think you're literally spinning, like, five plates at once. Yeah. And I, Most I don't. Most of the time, it's two things. If, but if you really look at how to spin plates, here's how you do it. Here we go. Have you ever seen a guy do it? Yes. What does he do? I don't know. I stopped paying or, attention because like, this is stupid. Or like a Harlem Globetrotter guy okay, now doing we're spinning balls yes. on the fingers, right? You had me at balls. <laughs> uh, colorful balls. And so uh, leathery balls. Yeah. How come Manscaped is the red, a, white, and blue. We can't get a Manscaped uh, podcast sponsorship. They're sponsoring everybody but us. Yeah. We really haven't tried. It's like an attack. Um, so... You ever, if you ever see someone spin plates or or, or a, a Harlem Globetrotter spin a bunch of basketballs, or eat off a plate. He starts one, right? Gets it going. Yes. Then he'll go to the second one. He doesn't do two hands simultaneously, <laughs> and then does it by two with everything, right? right? Yeah. That's multitasking to me. Is you oh, start you this start thing. Start it. I'm gonna go to two. Still spinning. Still spinning. I'm gonna still go spinning. to the third one. I'm gonna come back to one. Make sure that's good. Dog shit on the floor. And then eventually, eventually, I've got a system. Then I can throw a fourth thing in there, and that's kind of how I see the work day. But people like go, they like to tell you just like the diet shit, where they go, "You got to do it this way." Well, right, or or you don't know, like, or you can't multitask. Like, no one can truly multitask, and you're like, "Well, we got to break that fucking definition down." Yeah, you know, it's an efficiency thing. Lots of times. Like, there's lots of times where it's like, it's a good thing to walk away from something, do something else. Yeah, they say Bill Clinton could, like, it. read a book at the same time he could be in a conversation with you. That's, get a blowjob. <laughs> yeah, but that's, like, 
Oh, okay, there you go. That's that works a, too, right? That's another one that like I don't get. Like guys did are like, coming in? yeah, did you get Roadhead? And you're like, no, no, that would be unsafe. I've never even asked for it. Like, I that seems like two things that I'm not. No, that's too much going on. Mm-hmm. Driving, if you driving, you need kind of all all your faculties. I don't. I don't even want to sneeze while I'm driving, <laughs> right? Let alone have something like that. Yeah. Now, giving Roadhead to yourself. That's a different <laughs> no, ball that. game. Brother. Jacking off while driving, money. Mm, okay. <laughs> Did you come in? I'm gonna but, hit this more than I've ever hit it before. But I'm saying, like, you know, what I'm saying though, like, it's one of those things where it's like, that's too much. That you probably got dad issues or something if you're like super into that. Uh, there's, there's something you're. There's some void you're fulfilling. Uh-huh. The 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 pilot. You know, how, like pilots are a lot of pilots are alcoholics and shit. Right. Uh, a lot of like badass attorneys are too. Because they need that this thrill seeking gene kind mm. of thing. High functioning, but thrill seeking. Yeah, I guess. I mean, like, I don't know. I had a Sorry, sniff of camera. rum and coke. Oh, and, uh, and now you're popping off. How's your fantasy squad doing? Nah. I All I could do is think about I talked to a friend that left our fantasy league. He got demoted. There's a, there's a secondary league. Uh, of all the flunkies. Like the European soccer teams? Exactly. you got to get in. They they like formed that. it themselves. It, it's not our system. It just kind of organically happened where everyone's like, fuck those guys in that league. Because you get hated on pretty bad in right. ours. Um, and I go, was it better? Is it like, how is it? Was he bigger than me? And he's right. And he's like, I was like, man, you know what? I, I spend way... I, I don't want to know how much time I spend uh, like... On fantasy football, yeah, and you, I, I bet you get something out of it. Uh, it's probably not all a waste of time. Like you're probably thinking analytically, and you're probably thinking statistically, because it really is a stats nerd game if you break it down. Yeah, well, I mean, fantasy baseball is where it gets really nerdy, well, and that's why I like it more. But same, you can nerd same out with fantasy football, right? You're just dealing with a different sample size, so you're di- you're doing which makes it less mathematical. But if you play both, you're going. Uh well yeah and no because you're you're also trying to triangulate a bunch of data to fulfill mm. the the games played kind of thing yeah uh, right? yes but you would agree that football is going to be much more random on a week to week basis than be- baseball because of sample size yeah baseball so that's just what, works itself out but that's why it's but harder it be more frustrating that's why it's harder p- to project but that's why a lot of better see more opportunity in football a lot of the time especially college yeah um. That's why those daily fantasy things are kind of the evil, most evil things Fun of all. Because shit. what you're doing on the stock market, at least from the perspective of when I used to work at a mutual fund company, is they're all about finding the undervalued companies, throwing them together, five thousand stocks of undervalued companies, right. and calling it a micro, you know, small micro fund. Uh, they were the riskiest of all mutual funds, right? With the daily fantasy, it's kind of like that on a very very, very micro scale, but it's like I'm trying to find the under Greg Ward Jr. Yeah, for the Eagles, that guy wasn't even playing like three weeks right. ago. They don't know about him, but that's what makes it fun. What's his price, right? Right, but and it's not even just the price, it's like you got to think about how many people might because if you want to go for that big, that number one spot, like you got to have a weird, you got to see something that nobody else saw <laughs> but, because there's so many when there's a hundred thousand entries. And then Chances the, are you're th- going to be splitting it. That's like a fallacy of like delusions of grandeur, right? right? Like you're going to figure this out Ain't over nobody betting companies. As smart as me, <laughs> right? That's that's the, what's great about it. You I don't it, care how many supercomputers you have calculating these things. So maybe fantasy football does have some kind of like it does keep you in check because you're going to lose. Eleven out of your twelve people in your league are going to lose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so maybe it does go. You're not. You know, right, and you're not going to win every year either if you're in a good league. Yeah, our shit. No, I don't think anybody's won back to back in 15 years. Wow, yeah, (laughs) ours. We had a woman win four years in a row. Well, my wife, that's your first problem, dude. There was nothing we could do. They're smarter than us, right? Just pander, nah, (laughs) total (laughs) luck. Total luck. By the way, pragmatic advice I put it in uh, the episode post on Facebook. But I for, I, if I forget to do this because it is Christmas and it's the 22nd as we record this, this is this is good for future. This could be for birthday gifts. This could be for Valentine's Day. Uh, if you want to 
know what to get your your ladies for Christmas as a gift, mm -hmm. go to their Pinterest, go on their profile, and look on their Pinterest boards. What is Pinterest, you say? It's, it's a vision board of all the shit you want. Yes. It's pretty simple. I, fe I felt like I was Don Draper when I figured that out. I was like, oh, I am Don Draper and walk out of the room with my dork out. <laughs> like, what, what was the big revelation? That you can basically figure out what w your woman wants for Christmas without having to ask them and oh. without having to do a lot of heavy lifting. Well, sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm pr I good. used to be really good at keeping like Christmas gift ideas throughout the year in Evernote. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> Once I got uh, really unorganized this last year, that kind of those kind of things fall by the wayside. However, I, it reminded me when you're you're in a you need to scramble like most guys do. It's the twenty second right now. I guarantee someone's gonna listen to this. And it's like, oh yes, I oh need no, because to really give me a good gift giver is like you doing that uh, that test you're taking. Uh huh. It's like you gotta sit down and really be thoughtful and go okay. Right. What are all the conversations we've had? Uh, think, stupid. Think. I had to do that for my mom yesterday. I was like, ah, oh, I got to get her something good. Oh. And it's like, all right. I, was, I had to, like, turn everything off and sit at my table for, like, ten minutes. Like, I got it. She has pictures of all her grandkids when they're one. She doesn't have one of my daughter. She doesn't have one of my, my nephew. Uh, silver pewter frame. I'll go get that done. Eric can Photoshop. Uh, my nephew, if we didn't, he didn't get a professional one when he was a baby, we'll figure it out. Or I'll get on Fiverr and get someone to help me with Photoshop or something. But we'll get them all done, and I'll be a hero. That's then, the first thing you should think of. No, but you have to. I had to like imagine their. That's condo. like the job. That's what parents expect at our age at this point. It's like, all right, the pictures are coming. We know that's coming. What is the the thoughtful thing he's going to give Thought, us? Thoughtfulness is tough. That's what makes people good gift givers, though. I mean, that's you really have to sit down. It's almost like a prayer. You have to sit down and just think about that person and situation, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why, like I told you, when I do the to do list in the morning, like put in the gratitude top three. I just make a random top three of like I'm happy, I can breathe without issues. You know, like even shit like that. It makes you think about it throughout the day. Yeah, when I those were bad days. <laughs> when that's the top. Three. Yeah, no, <laughs> at I, least I'm breathing. I try to do it like a Rorschach mm. test. Like, what's the top three that come in your head? Not like what's the most important because then I'll never finish. The Rorschach that. tests I'll, are the things where like, what do you see? Yeah, the big vagina. It's a vagina every time. Just so you know, that's the answer. Vagina. All by the way, talked or with dick. our friend of the program. Also logos uh, or either dicks or. That's vagina. what I'm saying. I talked with our friend of the program, uh, Fergus, who will come on at some point, hopefully, but. He was saying, because he's got that VR surgery stuff. Mm, yeah. And it's in Tampa, too, which is like, this feels like it should be in Boston. Like, near MIT. You know what oh. I'm saying? Like, I put him on, and I was like, holy shit. And it was like, it was too much. Like, yep. I almost passed out. But uh, what's it called? What I'm saying is, he, <laughs> I would go, I told him that theory. I was like, we came up with it on the podcast, I think, that all logos are dicks or vaginas. And he was like, yeah. And then we're at this place, Hotel Bar. And hotel is like on the shaft. It, dude, it and works. Bars written on all on balls. <laughs> I don't have my Forest Hills dental shirt on, but I was like, Nikki, that's got three dicks in it. Everything, and I go show me and a vagina. Kinda. Show me the VR. Uh, the it's called Merce Tech or something like that. Mer a Merce Tech, and it's like, it looks like a Venn diagram. I go, that's that's a vagina. That's a vagina, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it could yeah. be three. Go ahead, have fun about with it, it everyone. Yeah. Go out, look at the next logo you look at, and see if it's got a dick or a vagina. Airbnb. To that's both. Remember? That was oh, what yeah, we did. Yeah, that that's, one has yeah, both. Yeah. We that's the best of both worlds. Right. That's yeah. the best kind. You pay more for that in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, what's the other one? The college football playoff one? Is it, is they, they try to make a college football right. on a trophy, but it just looks vagina. like a vagina. Yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously, there's a lot more dick ones out there than anything. Right. Yeah. We, that's how we design things. Look at these microphones. I know, total thing. They don't. The snowball this doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't. It really doesn't. It should be vagina shaped, like a, a big cone around our heads. They're better listeners. <laughs> <laughs> these things aren't even lit. Are these things on. Uh, yeah, we're just talking to ham radio. Just cam comes back at us. Um, what else? You got anything else? I think we're, we're right at that uh, point. You know, right? we're getting there. Okay. I don't know. What are we uh, talking about? I've got something about. Well, you've got Elf on the Shelf. Funness? Oh, well, I had 
a situation with the elf on the shelf where Polly the dog ate his face off and we had to act He's quickly. the 120 pound golden retriever sitting in between us currently right now. Currently farting between us. Yeah, we He's a uh, good boy though. Yeah, I had to I I got home and he ate the do- he ate the elf and then I had to go around looking for the uh, around the house looking for elf face fragments to make sure the kids aren't traumatized by that. <laughs> So thinking on my feet, type up a little letter, dear Avery. That was pretty sharp. I was impressed. I had to go back to the to the North Pole, blah blah blah. You put it on like parchment paper. Nah, printer paper. Papyrus. I did. I rolled it up and put a little ribbon around Mm -hmm. so that they, you know, it looked very. uh, Like when you make a pirate map, you crumple it up and then you. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, you burn it a little bit so it looks all good, you know. But uh, news flash. Looked authentic. But you know. From it Barbie was, the elf, it got it. It got us where we need to be, so it gives us a year to get another elf on the shelf. So if that happens, you guys, I can send you the uh, the uh, doc. Well, Word I think, doc I think one thing we can't put on our LinkedIn profile or resume or whatever is that we had we're to amazing think, at tricking kids. Uh, yeah, that too. With my white van without windows, <laughs> uh, it says free candy uh, on the side. No, it's that thing of. Uh, you think on the fly. We had to think on the fly so much <laughs> that you get like just really good at it. Right. Like yeah. <laughs> it, it's a, Ooh, it's actually it I'll is put this fire out. Like contingency planning, like instinctually almost because you've had to do it so much. Yeah. And I think people don't look at that as like a real valuable skill. <laughs> yeah, you know? it better be because that's most of the, that's gonna come up. So anything's gonna come. It's up. it's like you gotta it, have a contingency for everything. Like improv and conversation is kind of like that's like, that's like a clear example, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. doing this podcast, pinging back and forth. We have to listen to each other and and play off of each other, but actually make it a conversation that's worth listening to as well. But like, you know, if if one of we're not like this this subject's just getting boring. Let's go to the next one. Like we're not doing it like that. It's right. just we know when it's gonna kind of okay. Right. Move yeah. on to the next thing. That's your that's your contingency planning, right? That helps. That helps. That's passive aggressive, but it helps. Uh, pretty obvious. I'll I'll leave on we'll leave this episode on this because I thought it was really funny. I don't think I brought it up last episode. I'm walking my dogs around my building. I got like probably a thousand people that live in my building. Um, there's a huge dog park across the street. Right. Did I bring the, I didn't bring this up. I right? don't think so. No. Um. And the, you know how, like, you move into a neighborhood and you wait too long to get people's names? <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, I know that person. Can't ask now. Too late now. Right. But, I like, I've had more conversations with them than, like, most of my good friends this year. Sure. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Is it the same people at the gym? Right. Like, that guy? Yeah. With the milk jug of whatever blue liquid he drinks? Mm-hmm. Antifreeze or something? Yeah. Um, you're like, the I've cutting talk- phase. That guy's cutting awesome. What's that guy's name? Phase. I have no idea. No. no, no clue. I create stories about these. <laughs> right. This guy does roids. That's all I know. Yeah. I'm not going in the locker room when he's there because I feel like my wiener is going to be not that big. Uh, and so, what's it called? So, this girl that's in my building, she has a dog that's similar to one of my dogs. And then uh, we're talking about it, and we talk about this. It's a huge dog park across the street. Uh, one of the, it, the city did it. It's under an underpass, which I think is a great use of land. Like props to the city of Tampa for doing that. Yeah. Um, where they failed so many times about planning the city, because uh, we have like 18th in population for Metropolis and like top five in traffic. Okay. You no big deal. Just made it nice, but no big to. deal. Uh, but no. Well, it's like laid out by cokeheads from the 70s and 80s. The way the city's kind of <laughs> gridded out. So. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Just put it's another a three-way street. Yeah, just you put ever a... seen that shit before? No. Oh no, we'll just we'll do what Chicago did. And we'll just put fucking high-rise interstates on top of streets. Right. That'll work. Uh, we're not even that congested, but we're gonna do it anyway. More uh, streets. So anyway, um, I, we're talking about it. She's like, "Oh yeah, I don't even let." I'm like, "Yeah, I let my dogs run in there when there's no other dogs. Like, if I'm up early, five a.m., there's no dogs out there." I'll let them run around by themselves or really late at night, you know, midnight or something. There's no one out there. And she's like, oh, I don't even take my dogs out there, or my dog out there anymore because uh, my dog got sick from it. I was like, what happened? Like, the dog got HPV. And I was like, what? Dog, what? Dogs can get. What? Dogs can get that? What? And this is my point about spatial awareness. Like, 
the Southwest flight attendants that have asses too big to go down the aisle. Uh huh. She's not spatially aware at this moment. I look down. This is like a Woody Allen movie. Like she's telling me, like, yeah, my dog had HPV. Like, can you believe that? And I look down, and my dogs are like licking the shit out of her <laughs> dog's face. Like making out as much as two dogs can make out with one dog's face. Did you come? My dogs are and like, but what? <laughs> you knew you had this information before I did. Why didn't you let these dogs do this? Yeah, you we're not get, friends anymore. Because I was testing? like, I was like, whatever your name is, like, <laughs> lady, lady, uh. lady with big shoulders. Lady like, what's four. the fuck? Uh. So that was, uh, yeah, that was like, god damn it. Some people are just are not. Aware. I will like wash that, that cup you're drinking out of yeah. from there. What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity pod dot com on your FM dial. Tune in to the biggest balls of the mall. DJ Shock teamed up. 